Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Don Hatz. I'm the chair of the anatomy department here at Des Moines University. On behalf of Ed Christofferson, our coordinator of the body donor program, faculty and staff of the Department of Anatomy, I would like to welcome the welcome DMU faculty, staff, students, and especially our extended DMU family. The family of those individuals who donated their bodies to further the education of our medical professional students. Uh, this time I'd also like to extend a thank you to also the university administration, the staff, especially the students and the faculty uh, and all those in the Des Moines community for their contributions to today's memorial service. Our faculty and staff take great pride in the teaching of human anatomy and working with the gift your family members gave to Des Moines University. As you saw by the written tributes, that our students in the College of Osteopathic Medicine, College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery, and the College of Health Sciences are deeply touched by the gift that your loved one gave to us. Students, now you have seen your body donors as they were in life from the heartfelt pictures that were sent to us by their families for this service. I am asked often how the donors in life come to the decision of donating their bodies to our university. As you saw in the photos, these donors lived incredible lives. They left wonderful memories to their families, to their home communities, and with their donation to the Des Moines University community. I would like you to reflect on their decision of body donation. While they were living their life, as the families present today can testify, they had one more offering to give to their family, their community, their world. They came to a humanistic, unique, and an incredible decision to continue to promote human life after they have left this world. An offer of themselves to be a significant part in the training of our future healthcare professionals. So students and family members, as you hear the student speeches, the orchestra and the choir think of how their donation will or will affect the many lives our students will touch as they continue down their chosen professional path through their life. As a human anatomist, I have had the distinct honor and privilege to work with the donors and our students. I have often discussed with our students that these donors, now silent, speak loudly to them as their teachers of this basic scientific knowledge of medicine. We, their faculty, are the facilitators of their artwork, human anatomy. Without the gift your family members have given to Des Moines University, we would not be able to lay the foundational component necessary to further their knowledge of the art of medicine. The service is to honor the lives, the donations, and the spirit of the individuals who with their donation are, and gift are an integral part of the Des Moines University community. So today, we the university community gather to pay our respects to the spirit of our body donors and to their families, our extended Des Moines University family. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Angela Frank. I'm the president here at Des Moines University. Now, thank you all for coming to join us as we give a heartfelt thank you to the family and friends of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice and given unselfishly to advance the training of our future health care providers. All over the world, as each new generation of students begin their studies in medicine and other clinical disciplines, they will study the structure of the human body to understand how it functions and to learn how the normal function is altered by disease. Thanks to the early work of a Flemish anatomist and physician, learning anatomy through dissection is an irreplaceable and privileged part of a practitioner's training. The science of medicine has been advanced thanks to the human sacrifice of those who make this commitment. It is an awesome contribution. Your loved ones, grandmothers, grandfathers, mothers, 
fathers, sons, daughters, aunts, ankle, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, have given us an invaluable gift which we respect and honor. This is the day that we honor their contribution to science and education. What a noble legacy. Des Moines University as a health sciences university is committed to providing the best educational experiences and clinical training for our students. We are dedicated to primary care, prevention, and the delivery of compassionate, patient-centered care Professional integrity and respect for others are also primary tenets of the expectations we have for our future caregivers. We also require that students maintain sensitivity and respect for those who give of themselves to aid in their training, whether they are alive and well or deceased as donors. That we can assure you. However, at this moment, we also acknowledge your sorrow. There's a quote that I recall which states, death leaves a heartache no one can heal, but love leaves a memory no one can steal. As you reflect on this gift, which has been given to us and our students by your loved ones, we also thank you for your personal sacrifice and your commitment and letting go of the physical being and embracing the memory of the spirit of the person who is no longer with us. We recognize how difficult this may be, but hope you find comfort in knowing that they have provided an invaluable service. So I close with this. Those we love remain with us for love itself lives on, and cherished memories never fade because a loved one's gone. Those we love can never be more than a thought apart for as long as there is a memory, they will live on in your hearts. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Peter Ahn, and as president of the first year DO students, I would like to say a few words. Today, I and my fellow classmates are here with the desire to honor your loved ones, as well as to thank you, their families, for trusting us with them. As only medical students, we didn't know each donor how you all knew them, their personalities, their interests, quirks, the ways each of them shared life with all of you. But we are still immensely grateful for what each of them decided to share with us. I am humbled at their decision, for which they, based on a compassionate concern for the future health of others, allowed me and my fellow classmates to gain a small glimpse into what true selflessness is. These donors taught us not only about medicine in an academic sense, they also provided us with a bold example of what it means to be truly altruistic. The gift your loved ones have given us by partnering with us in an attempt to alleviate future suffering is one we will never forget. Just as your loved one's memories will live on through you, we will do our best to make sure that part of their compassion lives on in every patient we treat. Thank you.
Hutchinson. I'm the president of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery Class of 2020. And on behalf of my classmates, I want to thank you for your day to honor your loved ones. So in thinking what I want to say today, uh, I want us to somehow quantify the impact that your friends and family are going to have on our careers as healthcare professionals. As medical students, we get a lot of numbers from us day to day. And I see a lot of our faculty members here, so I figured I'd return the favor. So according to the Medical Group Management Association, the average physician sees about 18 patients per day. That's about 50, 90 patients per week, makes roughly 4,700 patients per year. So we want to take that to a bigger scale and think that the average physician practices for about 35 years. In just one of our careers, we're going to impact roughly 165,000 patients. All of these patients will be served with a very core of knowledge that we built upon the gift of love was provided for us. And mind you, I'm just talking about the future physicians in this room, not to account for all of our awesome physical therapy, physician's assistant, and master students here at DMU. What makes us unique as medical professionals in our individual fields is our knowledge of the body and how it works in the relation to everything that life, bring, life brings us. We have one of these skills through their gracious donation. Seeing the impact that your loved ones are making after they have passed, I can only imagine the impact they made on others while they were here on earth with us. Your loved ones have given us the opportunity to achieve our dreams and expand our minds. We will be eternally grateful and will carry the knowledge we gain from this experience for the rest of our lives. Thank you.
about nine months ago at our orientation to DMO. Myself and the rest of the incoming students gathered in the Student Education Center Auditorium to learn about the Body Donor Program here at DMU. Dr. Matz presented the information about our upcoming anatomy course and the importance of our donors. For the end of his presentation, he shared with us that a granite tombstone or plaque will mark the burial site of many donors, on which will be inscribed, here lie the remains of those individuals who bequeathed their bodies to the betterment of science and mankind. I would like to spend my time with you today reflecting on the latter part of this statement. I remember sitting in the auditorium nine months ago thinking about those words, betterment of mankind. At the time, it seemed like a phrase that carried a lot more weight than I could comprehend. When I thought of the word mankind, it brought to mind events in history like putting the first man on the moon or the Declaration of Human Rights after the Second World War. As the semester wore on, this phrase continued to persist in the back of my mind. Over time, it became clear to me how, through the selfless act that each donor had made, each and every one of us was taking a step toward the betterment of mankind. Whether you are a student in the College of Osteopathic Medicine, College of Health Sciences, or College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery here at DMU, past or present, we will all be a part of the generation, directly or indirectly, that helps develop the cure for cancer, discovers the key to allow victims of spinal cord injuries to walk again, conquer the obesity epidemic, or any of the countless issues that sit on the frontier of modern medicine. We are the healthcare professionals that will continue to strive for greatness each and every day to do what is best for our for the patient, our local community, and the global community. But we cannot do any of those things without the generosity that our donors have shown in offering themselves as an integral role in our education. The donors and their families, through their compassion and benevolence, have shown us, have allowed us to take that step forward to becoming the healthcare professionals of the future and to truly participate in the betterment of mankind. So, on behalf of the Doctor of Physical Therapy class of 2019, I would like to express my sincere appreciation and gratitude for the selfless acts that the donors have made and the impact that they have had on our education and will continue to have on the rest of our lives. Thank you.
member of the DEO class. My task is to provide to the utmost limits of my capability the best possible care to those in need of my aid and assistance. To this end, I will aid all those who are needful, paying no heed to my own desires and wants, treating friend, foe, and stranger alike, placing their needs above my own. To no man will I cause or permit harm to befall, nor will I refuse aid to any who seek it. I will willingly share my knowledge and skills with all those who seek it. I seek neither reward nor honor for my efforts, for the satisfaction of accomplishment is sufficient. These obligations I willingly and freely take upon myself in the tradition of those that have come before me. These things we do so that others may live. The Combat Medic Creed. The last line of this Combat Medic Creed, these things we do so that others may live, reminds us of the immense responsibility and sacrifice required of those who choose to make the care and protection of others their mission. To this end, I will aid all those who are needful, pay no heed to my own desires and wants, treating friend, foe, and stranger alike, placing their needs above my own. The second line shows how service members give up their personal desires, plans, and quality time with loved ones to answer the call to duty to protect the loved ones of others, putting the livelihoods and needs of millions of others above their own. Much like servicemen and women offer up their lives for the greater good of protecting the freedom and citizens of the United States, your loved ones have also made a selfless decision to contribute to our future right here at DMU by volunteering to become our first patients. They had an incredible amount of trust and faith in us as complete strangers to accept their gift and learn as much as possible from them for the sake of our future patients. And I will always be grateful for their selflessness. The lessons we have learned from spending countless hours with our patients will carry over into the 20, 30, or 40 years we have ahead of us as healthcare professionals, aiding us in our mission so that others may live. The study of anatomy is not only a rite of passage for first-year medical students, it is also often considered the foundation of medicine. It lays the groundwork upon which we will continue to build and cultivate our knowledge as we progress through our careers as well as providing us with an opportunity to put down our books and see everything firsthand early on in our training. As our first patients, the donors we are celebrating here today have taught us more than any textbook ever could. We are able to feel their muscles toned and strong from years of hard work, hearts and lungs that, that provided the support necessary to experience life to the fullest, scars left over from childhood adventures, and hands that so often held on to those they loved most. I learned that the variations in anatomy from one individual to the next can help tell the stories and experiences from a person's life. This realization is something I will carry on without me throughout my career as a military physician as I care for service members and their families, reminding me to see each patient as an individual with their own story to tell. I will willingly share my knowledge and skills with all those who seek it. I seek neither reward nor honor for my effort for the satisfaction of accomplishment is enough. This last line from the Medic's Creed exemplifies the gift we as students have been so fortunate enough to receive this year. Many of the don donors being honored here today gave up their knowledge, skills, and lives twice. First, as members of the United States military, and second, as contributors to our learning as first-year students. Neither time did these individuals expect to be rewarded for their numerous sacrifices throughout their lifetime. But today, we are here to honor them, the legacy they have left behind, and the futures they have enabled. Today, we thank them. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm York, and I'm honored to be able to share my husband Carden's story with you today. First, I want to thank everyone here for their um, love and support of their loved one's wishes for body donation. And I'll explain why I feel that way a little later. Carlin and I were married for 44 years and had three children. Renee married Marty, Heather married Rob, and Eric. And from these three kids, we have eight grandchildren. He was tough with our kids, but always wanted them to grow up with integrity and character. He was not perfect by any means. He loved to help them with their sports and even coach. 
with the grandkids, he would make every effort to be at their sporting events or concerts as well. Harlan had a sense of humor that sometimes was taken the wrong way, but he had a heart of gold that went far beyond. We brought 14 freshmen into our home every Wednesday night through their senior year. These boys and girls could come to us with anything that they wanted to discuss with us that they didn't feel comfortable sharing with their parents. But Carter told them in the beginning, if we feel your parents should know, we'll encourage you to talk to them, and if you don't, we'll talk for you. He was open to helping or even bringing into our home those that needed a place to stay until they could get on their feet. Carter loved the Nebraska Huskers football. Now I know I'm in Iowa, but he loved Huskers and our cabin on Ten Mile Lake. Fishing was one of the most relaxing pastimes and loved to teach our kids and grandkids how to bait that hook, where to look for the best spot, and if that fish was a keeper. He also enjoyed fishing around Panama, Iowa, area farm ponds. ponds. Harlan had a unique quality in giving. A person who wanted to help was, but was always behind the scene. He would never stand in front of a crowd to talk, but he'd give ideas to someone else. If there was kitchen work, He'd volunteer, as long as he didn't have to be out serving and talking to the people. Carlin was 57 years old when he was diagnosed with amyloidosis, a rare and serious disease with no cure, and told him it may have 18 months to live at most. After tests of all his organs, it was determined that it was in his bone marrow and blood and that Mayo Clinic was the place to go for chemo and stem cell transplant, and that might give him 10 more years. We come from a praying family, and that is what we did. <coughs> Upon arriving at Mayo, we were overwhelmed with the quality of staff and friendly people. After running tests again, the consulting physician stated that the doctors in Omaha must have made a mistake. Carlin was in remission from amyloidosis. That is unheard of for that disease. After his diagnosis, Carlin discussed with me his wishes for organ or body donation for medical study. On February 9th, 2015, he had his first heart attack. We had three stamps put in. July 6th brought us to a quad bypass. We found out a fourth of his heart was dead. Late that night, I got a call that Harlan had folded. And I prayed that God would spare him. As I was driving to the hospital, not knowing what I would find upon arrival, he survived and did well in the beginning, but then the loss of breath was very noticeable to him. January 26, 2016, he had a massive heart attack and he did not survive. As I look back, I feel that the amyloidosis is what attacked the heart. I had received a post on the foundation that sometimes cardiologists mistake heart attacks when it is really amyloidosis. Carlin lived only six months after the bypass, and I have seen individuals live for years. God has given me strength beyond measure this past year and a half, and I will be forever grateful for what he has given me. I see and hear signs every day that Herman is near, especially in this pair of cardinals that visit my yard. And this light that keeps coming on, and nobody turns it on. <laughs> I don't know if you figured this out, but Herman lived healthy almost 10 years after his diagnosis, no more than 18 months with no cure. His organs were not viable, so organ donation was not an option for us, because that was Herman's wish. Since he had not completed the paperwork for body donation, the kids and I were thrilled that Des Moines University would accept his body for medical study. His eyes were donated to the Iowa Lions Eye Bank, and now someone can see because of his generosity. I'm the type of person that wants to know things, so I contacted Edward Christopherson, the anatomical coordinator here at DMU, to see if we could tour the facility. I wanted to see what the study would entail. I wanted to make sure that it was going to be Harlan's remains in that container when it was returned. That just really bothered me to know that. I pleased to know that. My kids and I were amazed 
at the depth of information that was provided to us and was so impressed that it made us proud to have Harden's wishes given to DMU. The use of no cell phones and shrouding of the donors in the anatomy laboratory provided us with a sense of security and know that our loved ones were provided with respect and dignity during the donor body donor process. With this in mind, we know these students will leave here with great, in great positions because of these university standards. With the information Edward had told us, I felt so close to the students that were studying Harden's remains that I sent a thank you and included a note attached about him and a picture so they could know the man that they were studying. In typical Harden fashion, he donates his body, and I'm here to put closure to his life story. But his, he is missed beyond words, but his life will live on in our memories. At our cabin, we have a poem that he just really loved about being a keeper, and it goes like this. I pray that I may lift the fish until my dying day, and when it comes to my last cast, I most humbly pray that in God's great landing net and peacefully asleep, that I may be judged big enough to keep. And I thank God every day that I is my people.
Thank you all again for attending. 